Welcome to this lecture series in group theory. In this lecture, we'll be looking at what is called Burnside's lemma, although it is a lemma that is really due to Cauchy and Frobenius. Uh, let us recall one fact that we need. It is the orbit stabilizer theorem. So fix an action of a group G on a set X. Then we have this equality where stabilizer is, remember, this is those group elements which fix X, so to say. And uh, this is the orbit, which is the trajectory of x under the action. And of course, this is a subgroup of G, and this is the cardinality of the set of all the left cosets of this particular subgroup. And this is the cardinality of the orbit. This has nothing to do with finite groups or finite sets. This is true in full generality. And that's it. All right, here are the problems. Four very simple problems, uh, but related. All right, so uh, before we state the main theorem, let us see a motivation for as to why even we want to do something like that. That's not the only motivation, but uh, this is my motivation anyway. So suppose we have six beads or six dots or six objects that we want to color with, let's say two colors, red and blue and we want to arrange them in a circle. And we want to count how many such circular arrangements are there. Uh, I need to explain that a little bit. So we arrange the six objects like this in a circle and we color red, blue, red, blue. Suppose we color it that way. Another possible coloring would be start with blue and then red, blue, red, blue, red. But we will think of them, these two colorings as the same coloring because if you just rotate this by this much, meaning 60 degrees, you will get that coloring. And we would not like to distinguish between these two colorings. All right. So if we did not have any such identification constraint, if these are, let's say, labeled beads, one, two, three, four, five, six, then of course, there are a total of two to the power six colorings. But since we are making some identification, we will have less than two to the power six colorings. And we want to count how many are there. And of course, if you just think about it, you can count it by hand, but uh, we want to look at it with the lens of group actions. And that is what I want to get into as to how to, how to systematically count such things. All right, so first uh, let us see how to mathematically capture the notion of a coloring. So a coloring for us will be a function from this particular set to the set of colors, red and blue. So these you can think of as beads. Each bead has a number and then we assign colors to beads. This, this you can think of as an assignment of colors. So zero could be assigned to the red or blue, one could be assigned red or blue and so on. So there are two to the power six such functions. Okay. And in this, the, the coloring that is uh, uh, shown here is, is the one where F zero is red. So think of this as zero, this is one, this is two, three, four, four and five, those are the positions. F1 is blue, F2 is red, F3 is blue, F4 is red, and F5 is blue. All right, what about this guy? Here again, we have, let's, let me not call it F, let me call it uh, maybe, let me call it F tilde. So this is a function from that to the set of colors. Again, this is, so F tilde zero is blue. F tilde one is red. F tilde two is blue. F tilde three is red. F tilde four is blue. F tilde five is red. Right, so, these are two different colorings if we forget about the identification, but as we said, we want to think of these as the same colorings because this is obtained by just quote unquote rotating this. So here is how we think about it in terms of language of actions. So let X be the set of all maps from 
this set to the set of colors. So basically X is the set of all the colorings without any identification constraint. Okay. And now we will, you know, act on this by rotations. So let G be this particular group Z mod, Z mod 6Z and one can think of it as, not, not think of it as, it is actually 0 bar, 1 bar, 2 bar, 3 bar, 4 bar and 5 bar where I'm sure you remember what is meant by bar. This is the, you know, 0 is an integer and this is the coset of 0 of this particular subgroup. You know, coset coming from 0 of this particular subgroup and yeah, I'm sure you know what that means. Basically, these are remainder classes modulo 6. Okay, and G acts on X. How? So we define an action as follows to be completely formal. It's a map from G cross X to X and uh, G dot F of any I is F of I plus G. So G is one of these guys and I is one of those guys, F is an element here in X, and this is how we define it, and one may raise an objection as to I being a number, while G is not a number, G is one of these people, so what does it even mean to, uh, what does it even mean to add these two? Basically, add them modulo 6. So, if G is, for instance, suppose I is, I is 3 and G is 4 bar, then we just mean uh, this is equal to 1. Why? Because 3 plus 4 leaves the remainder of 1 modulo 6 and therefore this has to be interpreted as 1. So I hope that is clear. And this is, this is, yeah, so first verify that this is an action. So check, check that uh, this is an action. So one needs to check the two properties. One is that if this were the identity of the group, meaning if, if, if it were zero, then of course one needs to show that this is same as F, but that is clear because you're adding zero to I and therefore nothing changes. And the other property that G1 dot G2 dot F is G1 G2 dot F. And that's easy. So this is indeed an action. And the point is that the orbit of a color, uh, this is precisely the identification class, meaning if I have a coloring F, then the set of all the colorings, which we think of as same as F is precisely this, because this is, these are those colorings which are obtained by rotating the coloring F by some value, either 60 degrees or 120 or 180 and so on. So that is what one needs to realize that, you know, these, these are all the colorings which are sort of as the same. So what we are really asking is how many orbits? The question that we are raising is how many orbits are there? These are precisely the number of distinct colorings up to rotation. So we want to count the number of orbits under a given action. All right, so uh, this is a motivating example and uh, we have a systematic way to do that, which is captured by the following theorem. So start with an action, first we need a definition. So start with an action of a group on a set X and for an element of the group, we define the set fix G as those things in the set, which are fixed by G, which are not moved by G. So obviously this is a subset of X and this is sort of a dual notion to the notion of stabilizer. Stabilizer of an element was a subset of the group. It was those things in the group which fix that particular element. While here what we are doing is we have a, we have a group element and we are asking what are the elements of X which are fixed by it. It's kind of dual to it. And the theorem says the following. Suppose we have a finite group and a finite set and we are given an action of the group on the set and suppose it affords r orbits so the total number of orbits under this action is r then one can compute the number of orbits via this formula 
all right so this is this is the main theorem of this lecture and in the next lecture we will see applications of it okay so here is the here is a lemma that we will use it's a very simple straightforward elementary lemma x be some finite set and fix a partition of x then define for each element of the set x uh, ax as the part which contains x so for any x there's a unique ai which will contain it because this is a partition of x and a sub x just denotes the part the ai in which x lies then the total number of parts is this guy and this is a very simple uh, very simple fact if you do not get it immediately just take some take some example like n equals 2 suppose you had only two parts you had a set x and you had partitioned into two parts and you think about what this is you will see that the number is 2 so we will use that and now let us prove this particular thing so here is the proof here what we will do is these are all the group elements uh, maybe g1 g2 g3 up to let's say gm these are all the group elements and this is the set x maybe i will draw it differently so this should be yeah so x1 x2 x3 up to xn let's say this is the set x and what we will do is we will join an edge between gi let's say i have gi somewhere here some gi and here i have an xj we will join an edge between gi and xj if so this edge will be joined if gi uh, sorry if xj in fix gi so in short pick a group element and pick a set element we join an edge between the two if the group element fixes the set element and otherwise we do not join an edge so what we will see is we will see some crisscross crisscross uh, complicated thing consisting of edges uh, the technical term for such an object is a bipartite graph but you don't need to know anything about that so we have such combinatorial data coming out of the action and what we will do is we will count the number of edges in two different ways one from the perspective of the group and the other from the perspective of the set so from the perspective of the group what we are asking is so how many edges emanate from g1 how many edges emanate from g2 how many edge, edges from g3 and we will just add them so for any g fix if, if 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 we have a group element g how many edges emanate from g so it is it is connected to those things which it fixes so the number of edges that emanate from g is precisely fix g right so this is the number of edges that emanate from g so the total number of edges is nothing but this so this is the total number of edges as seen from this perspective now let's see what is the total number of edges from this perspective okay fix the set element x how many edges emanate from it it is well a set uh, an, a set element x is connected to g if g stabilizes it if g fixes it so the things that it is connected to is precisely its stabilizer and therefore the total number of edges that emanate from x is the cardinality of the stabilizer of x and therefore this equality is clearly there this implies let me shift everything up this implies that this quantity is
this quantity right and uh, the right hand side is just observe the right hand side is this so what did we do from here to here all we did was we just use the fact that this is nothing but almost you know by definition in some sense or Lagrange's theorem if you will you just use this fact all right and now by the orbit stabilizer theorem the right hand side is this okay and now since orbits partition the set x by the blue lemma in the previous slide this is the total number of orbits which we wrote as r and that's it that's the proof so the to total number of orbits is this quantity and this is called the cauchy frobenius theorem this is the cauchy or cauchy frobenius theorem but mostly it is referred to as burnside's lemma so what happened was burnside wrote some expository article at some point or maybe some research article at some point in which he mentioned this this theorem and he attributed it to Cauchy and Frobenius but uh, somehow you know history ended up attributing it to Burnside himself okay so this is uh, the lemma of the lemma. and sometimes yeah sometimes people even call it the lemma that is not due to Burnside okay wonderful so this is this is our main theorem of this lecture we will see applications of it next time and maybe in further lectures we will count such things or maybe more complicated things. Okay, so this is it. Thanks for listening and I will see you next time.